so in the last class, I have given you one problem to solve for the quiz. The solution of it should be like this. This is the circuit, okay? So this was the circuit, right? So you are told to find the nodal voltages, okay? And you need to find this, v, the voltage So you are told to find this voltage drop across, across the resistance, right? Through nodal analysis. So what is the first step to solve a nodal analysis circuit? So you need to find the number of nodes first, right? So this is your reference node, okay? There are other nodes as well. One is here, one is here and the other one is here, okay? So you need to name all the node voltages first. So if I consider this as node one, this is as node two, and this is as node three, you can name them now, V one, okay? V two, and this is V three. Then you have to name all the currents coming out and going inside these three nodes. So you have to mark them, name them. So this is I2 current. I2 is equal to one ampere, this is given. So this is your I2 current. Here, this is your I3 current, right? And this one is your I1 current. So these are given. You don't need to name them. This is already named. So the current going through this branch should be named. The current going through this branch also should be marked, okay? Also in this branch. So you have to name all these currents first. So let me say, as this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal, let me say the current is flowing in this direction, okay? So I mark it as small I1, okay? You can mark this current going inside or you can mark this current going outside this node. So there is no difference, okay? You can consider it in any direction. I have considered it in this direction, okay? 
So I am naming this as a small i2. Do you understand? And also, you have to name the current through this branch. This is the only branch left out, right? So you have to name this current as well. So this is the higher uh, polarity, and this is the lower polarity. So the current must flow in this direction. So let me consider the current is flowing in this direction, from higher potential to lower potential. And I am naming it as small i3. Is it OK? So you can name them by any names. You can name them IA, IB, IC, any name. So it doesn't have to be small i1, small i2, small i3. You understand? OK. Now you have to apply KCL at every node points. OK? So you start applying KCL. Applying KCL at node 1. OK? So you need to apply KCL at node 1. So if you apply KCL at this nodal point, what should be the equation? You guys tell me. I, I2 plus small i1 should be uh, I2. Yes. So capital I2 plus small i1 should be equal to small i2. This is the equation, right? From this nodal point. So now you have to convert this current into voltage. So you have to use Ohm's law to convert this current into voltage. So if you do that, I know I2 is equal to 1 ampere. So you can directly write it 1 ampere. Plus, I1 should be equal to, I1 is flowing in this direction, right? So the voltage at this end is V2. And the voltage at this end is V1. So how will I find this current? This V2 minus V1 divided by the resistance over here should give you the current small i1, OK? So V2 minus V1 divided by A ohm should give you i1, right? Then you have to find i2 in the similar fashion. So what should be your I2? I2 is flowing from this node to this node, right? So which one is the bigger voltage? So V1 is the bigger voltage than V3. So what should be your I2 current then? V1 minus V3 divided by 1 ohm. So write that over here. So this is the equation you get from this nodal point. Just solve it and make it simple, OK? So this A, let's say A is equal to 5. 1 ohm, sorry. It should be 1 ohm. Thank you. OK, let's say A is equal to 5. I have given you all A numbers, right? Yes, so each and every answer should be different. OK, so this A number, you have to put it over there. You understand? So if you put it over here, instead of this A, it should be 1 ampere plus V2 minus V1 divided by 5. 5 ohm, right? Is equal to V1 minus V3 divided by 1 ohm. OK? So you solve this, multiply the whole equation by 5, you get 
5 ampere plus V2 minus V1 is equal to 5V1 minus 5V3. Solve it. Let's say if you bring it over here, it will be 6V1. You have minus uh, 5V3. Let's work with V2 first. If you bring this V2 over here, it will be minus V2 and there is V3 minus 5V3, which should be equal to 5, okay? So this is the first equation. You understand? So this is a very simple calculation, okay? Now you have to apply the same process again at node 2. So apply, applying KCL at node 2 now. Write it over here. So if you apply KCL at this point, what should be your equation? Tell me. I1 plus I3 plus capital I3 should be equal to zero, right? Because all the currents are coming out of the, that node, of this particular node two. All of the currents are coming out of it. There is no current going inside it. So sum of all the voltage should be, I mean sum of all the currents should be equal to zero. So this is your KCL, right? So. Asho. So small i1 plus small i3 plus capital I3 should be equal to zero. Now apply the same Ohm's law and change the current into voltage again. Capital I3, you know two ampere, just put it over there. And small i1, what is your small i1? V2 minus V1 divided by the A number, V2 minus V1 divided by 5 ohm plus I3, what is I3? V2 minus 0 divided by 4 ohm. So V2 minus 0 divided by 4 ohm. And your capital I3 is 2 ampere equal to 0, okay? If you multiply this by 20, it should be like this. 4V2 minus 4V1 plus 5V2 plus 40 amp is equal to zero. So now you bring V1 here, four, V1, this two becomes nine V2 is equal to minus 40. This is your equation two. You understand? Okay. Bustu berasa tomna shabai? Konta? Equation ta? So how will you get this equation? So you have to apply KCL at this node point two. So basically, what does KCL say? Some of the incoming currents, some of the entering currents or incoming currents, huh, whatever you say it, the sum of all the entering currents should be equal to zero. Or, or you can say it something like this, sum of the entering currents plus the sum of the outgoing currents or leaving currents should be equal to zero, okay? So there are no entering currents over here. All of them are leaving that node. This I3 is leaving this node. This small I3 is also leaving this node. And this small I1 is leaving this node. There is no entering current. The sum of all the leaving currents should be equal to zero, okay? You understand? 
that is what I have wrote over here. And then this I1 can be replaced by Ohm's law if you want to convert it to voltage. So this current can be divided by voltage divided by the resistance. You get this current from there. And what is this current? This current is particularly flowing through some branch, right? So the branch has two terminals. So we know that current flows from higher terminal to lower terminal, okay? So if the direction of the current is in this way, that means this is the higher terminal and this is the lower terminal. So higher terminal minus the voltage at the higher terminal minus the voltage at the lower terminal divided by the resistance between them should give you the current, okay? Now you understand? So this is from where you get this equation. Now you have to apply the same theory at nodal point three. So what should be the equation from this if you apply KCL over there? So applying KCL at node three. Bolo? Capital I1 plus I3. Capital I1 plus I3 plus small I2 is equal to zero. Because all the currents are entering that node. If all the currents are entering, which means sum of these currents should be equal to zero. As there are no leaving currents, the leaving current is equal to zero already. We have only entering currents. So we basically know that at a nodal point, sum of all the currents should be equal to zero. So if you add these currents, this should be equal to zero, okay? So this is where we get this equation. So I3 we know, I, I1 we know, and I2 is V1 minus V3 divided by one ohm, right? So write that. I1 ta koto? I1 is two ampere. I3 is two ampere. Okay? What is I2? V1 minus V3 divided by one ohm. Should be equal to zero. Okay? So simplify this equation. This becomes four. So V1 minus V3 is equal to minus four. This is your third equation. So solve these three equations to find V1, V2, and V3, okay? You can write this equation and this equation in this manner as well. Minus four V1 plus nine V2 plus zero times V3 is equal to 40. You can write it in this form as well, right? There are three terms. So this can be written as V1 plus zero times V2 minus V3 is equal to four, okay? Because we want to form a matrix. Minus four. Minus four. Uh, minus four. Okay? So the main purpose of writing this equation in this form is because we want to form a matrix. Okay? So now we solve for we solve for V1, V2, and V3. We will use Kramer's rule. You can use simultaneous equation and solve it as well, okay? But I will use the Kramer's rule for easy calculation. Then after finding V1, V2, and V3, you need to find this voltage. When you get V2 and V1, the difference between these two voltage will give you VA, okay? This V2 minus V1 is the potential difference across this resistance. Then you can find this voltage as well. (coughs) 
So if I arrange them in a matrix form, it looks something like this. If I take equation one, the first coefficient is six. The second one is minus one. The third one is five, right? Now take uh, uh, the constant term first. This is five, okay? Then go to the second equation. Minus four, nine, zero, and minus 40, okay? And the third equation will give you one, zero, minus one, and minus four. So put it in a matrix form now. So this is basically V1, this is V2, and this is V3. Write this in column matrix. This is V1, this is V2, and this is V3, okay? So this is your matrix form. Now you have to solve it for V1, V2, and V3. Your V1 should be is equal to del 1 divided by del if we are using the Kramer's rule, right? V2 should be del 2 divided by del V3 is equal to del 3 divided by del, okay? So, what is your del 1? Del 1 is nothing, but you have to replace this V1 column by this constant term and find the determinant, okay? So you know how to find the determinant, right? Yes. So if I find this determinant, del, this del matrix is this one, okay? So find the determinant of it. This is six minus one, minus 5, minus 4, 9, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, right? Find the determinant. So, when you are trying to find the determinant through diagonal uh, form, so I am basically cutting this line, right? So six into nine into minus one, these are positive. So I am cutting it again, but one matrix is missing over here. So you have to bring this column down over here. I mean, bring this row down over here. So you have six, minus one, minus five. This minus five gets canceled. This one was left out while you were cutting in this way, right? So that is why you are bringing this down over here. While you are cutting this line, there is another matrix missing. So this one, you have already brought it here, right? Now you, you need to bring this column I mean, bring this row over here. So, because this one was missing. Minus four, nine, zero. This gets cut out. So, all the three lines are diagonally crossed, right? So, these are all positive, okay? Now, you write it over here. So, six into nine into minus one. Six into nine into minus one plus this, the second diagonal should be plus. So minus four into zero into minus five becomes zero. Minus four into zero into minus five. And the third one, minus one into minus one, I mean one into minus one into zero. So this one into minus one into zero. This becomes also zero, okay? then you have to diagonally cross in this direction as well. So while you are crossing this one, this becomes negative, okay? So this is why you write negative over here. 
So minus 5 into 9 into minus, right, this is 1, right? Minus 5 into 9 into 1. Minus 5 into 9 into 1. Then again, minus. Because while you are cutting this, this is negative. So 0 into 0 into 6. 0 into 0 into 6. Then again, you have to cut this line. Minus 1 into minus 1 into minus 4. Minus 1 into minus 1 into minus 4. Okay? So this is how you calculate the determinant. So if you calculate this, how much is the value? Can you calculate it? Karo kache calculator ache? Ekto ye karo to calculate karo. Eta emni cancel out hoye jai. Zero hoye jai. Eta zero hoye jai. Eta zero hoye jai. Baki gula calculate karo. Hmm? Kato ache? Calculate Kore fourteen. Uh, let's say you will get some value over here. Let's say fourteen. Okay. Dako match kore dako. Jadi karo onno result ashe. Thik calculation to bolo. Let's say this is fourteen. Okay. So we have got the determinant, this base determinant, right? Now you have to find the determinant del 1. So to find determinant del 1, the matrix should be this. So this column will be replaced by the constant. The other columns should be same. Okay. Minus five. Okay. So uh, you have to solve this in the similar fashion. Okay. In the similar manner, you have to solve this del one as well. So when you solve this, you will get del one. You will get del one is equal to some b constant. Let me say. Then you have to find V1. So V1 should be is equal to, let's say, if this is B, this B should be divided by minus 5. So you will get the voltage V1. In the similar manner, you have to find V2 and V3 as well. Okay? So when you get V1, V2, and V3, you will be able to find the potential difference across the resistance R3, okay, which is VA, VA voltage. You will be able to find that. So VA, VA should be is equal to V2 minus V1, okay. So when you get this value, this V2 minus V1 will give you the potential difference across the resistance R3. So this was the problem that I have given you in the exam, quiz. So today we are going to start a new topic, the circuit theorem. Okay? Hi, Apollo. Calculator the Shamadhan na kore boshate chao. To me akon calculator the kore na ki pasha jonata dehe kore na bujbo ki babe. এটা আমাকে বোঝাতে হবে যদি ওইটা তুমি ক্যালকুলেটর দিয়ে করে আমাকে বোঝাতে পারো যে স্যার আমি এই ভ্যালুটা যে বসিয়েছি এটা আমি বুঝে শুনে বসিয়েছি কারোটা দেখে বসায় নাই তাহলে আমি মেনে নিব ঠিক আছে 
ওই লিখে দিলে হবে না তো আমাকে বুঝাতে হবে খাতায় বুঝাতে হবে তাহলে আর কোনো কোয়েশ্চেন এখানে থাকে ক্যালকুলেটর দিয়ে তো সবাই করতে পারে তোমার মাথায় বুদ্ধি আছে কি না এটা করার সেটা দেখার জন্য তো পরীক্ষা ওকে দেখো বেসিক্যালি উই হ্যাভ ভেরি কমপ্লেক্স সার্কিটস উই নিড টু সলভ ইন রিয়েল ওয়ার্ল্ড অ্যাজ ওয়েল অ্যাজ ইন দ্য ম্যাথামেটিক্যাল প্রবলেমস দ্যাট ইজ গিভেন ইনসাইড দ্য বুক রাইট সো টু সলভ দিস কমপ্লিকেটেড সার্কিটস উই নিড টু অ্যাপ্লাই সাম theorems okay circuit theorems so this chapter 4 is all related to solving those problems by circuit theorems so there are several kinds of theorems which i have i think i have wrote them in the previous class right so the first one is the linearity property so how you can write a linear equation from a complicated circuit we will study that okay koyta baje ekhon 12 ta 12 ta 16 ache jack onek shomoy ache So far we have studied the basic laws, the Ohm's law, right? You, know, you all know the Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. So Ohm's law So basically Ohm's law relates the input current I to the output voltage V, right? So the equation is V is equal to IR. So in this case, if the current is increased by k constant
and then the voltage also get increased, right? So if you increase the current by a constant k, if you multiply the current by constant k, your voltage in this case will get also increased by a constant k, right? So what happens if you have more than one resistance? So you will get two voltage drop across that separate resistance, right? So if you have two resistance, you will have a separate voltage drop across those resistors. So I can write those in this form. Let's say V1 is equal to I1 R and V2 is equal to I to R. So to find the total voltage drop, you need to add both of them, right? So let's say the supply voltage V should be is equal to So it should be like this, right? So if in a circuit you have two resistors of same uh, resistive value, so the current passing through them might differ, okay? Uh, if they are in parallel, okay? Or they are in series, doesn't matter. So basically in linear circuits, we need to add those voltage drops. So if you add those voltage drops, you will get the total voltage to be V1 plus V2, right? So this is basically nothing but a linear equation. So if you increase the value of K over here, the value of voltage will also increase linearly. So if you plot this V times I, so it will increase linearly through the origin. So if you put a value of I over here, let's say zero, then your voltage is also zero at this point, right? So if you put I equal to one ampere, one ampere, then your voltage will also be the corresponding value over here, okay? For one ampere. For two ampere, it will be over here. So basically, this is increasing linearly, okay? So now, if I show you how a linear circuit works uh, through an example, then you will be able to understand easily. Uh, let me write the linear definition first.
So basically a linear circuit is one whose output is directly proportional to the input. Okay, it is directly linearly related to its input. Whatever you are feeding it, it should be linearly proportional or directly proportional to the output value you are getting. So if you increase the input by k times constant, your output will also increase by k times. So it's basically like a gain, gain amplifier, okay? So linearly related to it. So this is the basic definition of a linear circuit, okay? Now let's solve one problem related to linearity property. So there is an example 4.1 in the book. We will be solving that problem. So this is the problem which is given in the book and you are told to find the current I naught flowing through 4 ohm resistor, okay? The supply voltage is given to be uh, 12 volts. This supply voltage is already given to be 12 volts, okay? So you have to find this I naught when the voltage is 12 volt. Also, they told to find the current I naught for 24 volt as well, okay? There are two problems in one example problem, okay? So for 12 volts, let, let us find it for 12 volts first. We, uh, if we can do 12 volts, we can do 24 volts as well. It's the same theory, so we will do one. So simple question, find I naught when Vs is equal to 12 volts. So they have given two loops. So you need to apply KVL at those loops, okay? So just use your basic 
theorems okay uh, the kvl and kcl theorems so here if i apply kvl at this loop So let's say applying KVL to loop 1. I'm considering this as loop 1 as this is I1 current flowing through that loop. So just use the basic KVL formula. Kirchhoff's voltage law. So this will be what should be the voltage across this resistor. I1 current is flowing. This small I1 current is flowing through this 6 ohm, right? So the voltage drop over here should be I1 times 6 ohm, right? So 6 into I1 should be the voltage drop over here. And this I1 current is flowing through this as well, right? Like, what do you think about it? Like, what do you think about it? Like, what do you think about it? What do you think about So, if I am considering the voltage drop, the voltage drop of 2 ohm is already given to be Vx, right? The voltage drop over here is given to be Vx. Vs is equal to 12 volt. This supply voltage Vs is equal to 12 volt. So, tumrai ekhano likhte paro, okay? While I am considering the KVL for this loop 1, the voltage drop across this is small i1 times 6 ohm. And the voltage drop across the 2 ohm is given to be Vx. And this i1 is current is entering this positive end, right? So as it is entering, this voltage should be positive. So you have to consider it to be positive, okay? Jodi barrier jai supply theke, takhonamra negative dhori, negative V. Then, Jodi dhoke, tale amra positive V dhori. So, we can make it dhukchana. We can dhukchana, positive the So, this is why this is positive. Okay? So, now this current is coming and flowing through 4 ohm. And there is I2 current flowing in this direction. But your primary loop is this one, right? So this is flowing in this direction. So the resultant current should be in this direction. So this current is bigger than this current. So I1 minus I2 times 4 should be the voltage drop across this. 4 times I1 minus I2. Okay? And then you have a positive voltage over here. The current is entering it. The current, the loop current is entering this voltage source. So this will be positive as well. Is equal to zero. Okay? So this is your KVL equation.
Now you solve this. This will be your 12 I1. Then you have 4 times I2 and you have Vx over here. Ten. ten, right. Sorry, this should be ten. Ten, and you have Vx is equal to you <laughs> It should be minus 12, right? So this is the equation you get from there. And now you have to apply KVL at this loop as well, right? So apply KVL at loop two. So when you are applying KVL at this loop, so basically from this source voltage, the current is going outside, right? So the current is going outside. So this will be the negative voltage, minus 12, okay? Supplying, supplying means it is decreasing, right? Releasing. So it is releasing. So this is minus 12 as this is supplying. And you have voltage drop over here. I2 is going over there. I1 is flowing downwards. But your resultant current is in this direction. As you are considering loop two, this is the bigger current and this is the smaller current. So I2 minus I1 times four should be the voltage drop over here. Then you have eight and four, add them up. If you add them up, it becomes 12, right? 12 times this I2 current. Then you have a dependent voltage source. Current is entering through negative terminal and leaving through positive. So this will be negative. Minus three Vx is equal to zero. So if you solve this, minus 12 plus 4 I2 and you have 12 here so 16 I2 you have 4 minus uh, I1 there is no other term I1 so it will be something like this minus 3 Vx is equal to 0 so this is the equation you get right so if I bring the constant term on that side, it will be 16. Uh, if I write it, I1 first. So these are the two equations you will get from the two loops, right? If you apply KVL. So this Vx, this Vx is nothing 
but the current flowing through this branch times 2 ohm. So you can write Vx is equal to 2 times I1. You can replace it in both equations. Okay? Instead of writing Vx, you can put that. So what happens if I put Vx in these two equations? This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Put this Vx in both the equations. So if I put it in the first one, 10i1 minus 4i2 uh, plus 2i1 is equal to minus 12. So this is the equation you get from the first one. So add them up, it becomes 12i1 minus 4i2 is equal to minus 12. So this is your third equation. So this is the simplified equation from equation one, okay? Similarly, if you put this in equation two, it will be 4i1 plus 16i2 minus three times two i1 is equal to 12. Simplify it, you will get this is six minus six. This is minus four. So it will be minus 10 i1 plus 16 i2 is equal to 12. This is equation four. Now you need to solve this equation and uh, three and four to get I1 and I2, okay? So you will get the currents, loop currents, I1 and I2 from these two equations if you solve them simultaneously. So if you solve them simultaneously, these two equations, this one and this one, it becomes I1 and I2 simultaneously solve the calculator. Baro divided by 76 koro. अथवा जो भी simultaneously ये दो टके solve करो, ताहले देखो minus टा जो भी ये पशे आनो दो टके equation की equal करा जाए, तेरे ना? ये minus टा दिए जो भी ये टके गुण करे दाव, ताहले ये टा minus twelve i one plus four i two should be equal to minus ten i one plus sixteen i two राइट इटा बहुत अच्छा हाँ एक पिचन दिखे फ्रॉम वेयर डिड आई गेट दिस इक्वेशन कैन यू टेल मी बोलते हो अरबा कोठे के पहला कौथा बोल चुका है ना ताले देखो इक्वेशन थ्री और इक्वेशन फोर देखो दिस इज़ ट्वेल्व आई वन माइनस फोर I2 is equal to minus 12, right? 
So if I multiply this by minus, it becomes minus 12i1 plus 4i2 is equal to 12, right? And in equation 4, you have this equal to 12. So I can say this part is equal to this part. You understand? So from here, you can find the relation between I1 and I2. So if you bring this over here, this becomes 2I1. And if you bring that over there, it becomes 10I2. OK? 10 or 12 I? 12. it becomes 12i2. So you can write i2 is equal to minus 6, sorry, i1 is equal to minus 6i2. You can write it and you can put it in these two equations. Put this i1 over here in this equation. In this whole equation, you can put this i1 over here and find i2 from there. You can put this I1 in this equation as well, in this equation as well, and find I2, okay? When you get I2, you can find I1 from there as well, okay? So when you have both the currents, I1 and I2, this I1 is basically flowing in this branch. And this I2 is basically flowing in this branch. This I2 is flowing through over here in this direction, right? This small I2. So I need to find this I0. This I0 is nothing, but it is equal to I2, okay? So from there, you can calculate I0. Pustavarsa. And this Vx, you can calculate to be 2 times I1, right? You know I1, you can get Vx from there. Is there any confusion in this problem? Shoye Bucho? Ashkar class to thak, next class se, amra onno problem solve korbo. Superposition. We will start superposition or we will see a few more examples related to linear property in the next class, okay? We will end this class today. Thank you. <laughs>